There are so many brands of bassinets out there. Snoo, Halo, Arms Reach Co Sleeper, Guava Lotus, Up a Baby. How are you ever supposed to choose? If your head is spinning trying to figure out which bassinet you should register for or buy, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have learned about the different types of bassinets, and I'll tell you which bassinet I recommend after having tried many different products with my babies. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a baby registry certified expert, a lactation educator counselor, and a mom of two. It's my job to help first time expectant parents figure out what gear you need and how to use it so you can head into postpartum life feeling more confident. Okay, let's get right into it. First, let's take a quick step back and talk about why and when bassinets are used. A bassinet is a safe sleep surface for your baby. You don't need a bassinet if you have a crib or other safe place for your baby to sleep. A bassinet is more portable than a crib, so you can pull it right next to your bed or take it with you out of your house. Some bassinets, called co-sleepers, attach to a parent's bed so your baby is close to you. Other bassinets attach to a stroller and optionally come with a stand for use inside your home. But bassinets are smaller than cribs. In general, your baby will only fit into a bassinet for the first few months of their life depending on the size of the bassinet and the size of your baby. Bassinets vary in size as do babies, of course. So which bassinet should you buy? First, let's talk about the snoo. The biggest pro is that the snoo helps many, not all, but many babies and parents get more sleep. With sound and motion, the snoo is generally really effective at what it sets out to do, which is keep babies asleep on their backs for longer. Sleep deprivation feels awful, and it makes total sense that families try to get the most sleep they can. But there are two major cons to the snoo. The first is the sale or rental price, which is just not in reach for many families. The second major con is that the snoo does such a good job of keeping babies asleep on their backs for longer periods of time that it can actually lead to a litany of challenges for parents and babies. Newborn babies are supposed to wake up multiple times in the night, it is biologically what we expect, and it is a good thing, even though it's definitely not easy for you as the parent. Night waking is thought to protect babies from SIDS, and if you're nursing, feeding your baby during the night is super important for building and protecting your milk supply. So when a snoo does such a good job of keeping babies asleep, they may miss their feedings and have weight gain challenges. When your baby isn't gaining enough weight, it can be very stressful. And if you're nursing your baby and they're sleeping through feedings, your body might not make enough milk to feed your baby. There's another challenge that can pop up. We know from pediatricians that it's safest when babies sleep on their backs. The snoo generally does a great job of keeping babies on their backs because you basically are strapping your baby into a straitjacket. But there's such a thing as a baby spending too much time on their back, and it can lead to lots of stressful challenges. Some occupational and physical therapists and pediatricians have noted that babies who use the snoo often develop issues with head shape as a result of the amount of time they're spending on their backs. There are also concerns about long-term swaddling not being good for babies' development. I myself had a variety of challenges with my first baby, partially as a result of swaddling him too much for too long into his life. One other thing I want to mention is that not all babies tolerate the snoo. I did try the snoo with my second baby when he was a newborn, and he was not into it. He screamed and was super angry until I took him out. The snoo is definitely not for all babies, and nothing is wrong with your baby if they reject it. So which bassinet should you use? I'm going to tell you about my favorite bassinet, the Guava Lotus. I used the Guava Lotus bassinet with both of my babies. I purchased it along with the travel crib. It was the bassinet that they both liked the best, and I've tried a lot of them. Here are three reasons I like the Lotus. Number one, size. The Lotus is big enough that I was able to use it until about five months, which is when I began to transition my babies to a crib. Number two, portability. The Lotus is easy to travel with because it folds up into a backpack, so you can bring it with you wherever you're traveling, whether it's down the block or across the country. Your baby will already be familiar with it. Number three, ability to rock. This is my favorite part. You can flip the legs around to make the bassinet either stay still or to allow it to rock. I found the best way to get my babies to sleep was to put them in the bassinet and rock them for a few minutes. This was also something my husband did too. For middle of the night wake-ups, I'd nurse and then my husband would rock the baby back to sleep. 
Babies love a gentle rocking motion and it can make a huge difference for getting them to sleep. So yes, it's more work than the snoo because you have to physically rock them. But for me and my babies, it felt right, even if it wasn't necessarily the easiest option. And unlike the snoo, I didn't have to be concerned about the guava lotus being so effective that my babies would sleep too long. You may be wondering, what about the stroller bassinet? Maybe you're thinking about getting an Uppa Baby, a Mockingbird, Nuna, or any number of other brands of strollers. I personally love having the option of a bassinet for the stroller, and I recommend getting one if you can. Getting outside with my babies in all seasons was so important for my mental and physical health. The stroller bassinet was a good option to have as a safe sleep surface so my baby could snooze while I got fresh air. A stroller bassinet is a great thing to see if you can borrow from a friend or buy used. The problem with using these bassinets is that if you buy a stand for it to use as your primary bassinet, your baby is likely to grow out of it by only about two or three months after they're born. If you're trying to keep your baby in your room for a longer period of time, like six months, the stroller bassinet most likely isn't going to be the only bassinet you'll need. So while they're really great for bringing your baby out for walks in the early weeks and months, they aren't a longer term solution. If you want to feel more confident as you prepare to welcome your baby, I lead a class called Baby Gear Bootcamp for First Time Expectant Parents. In just about an hour a day over five days, you'll learn exactly what baby gear you need, what's optional, and what you can skip. More importantly, you'll learn how to use your baby gear in a way that respects your baby's development. You'll also learn how to breastfeed, pump, and bottle feed with videos led by an amazing lactation consultant. It's all of the info that helped me go from struggling with my first baby to thriving with my second. The class is just a few hours, but it demystifies the fourth trimester so you and your partner can start your life as parents feeling more confident and less stressed. You may think, this sounds pretty good, I'll come back to it later. Don't procrastinate because, and no judgment here, but you probably won't come back to this later. Even if you take away just one or two little nuggets from this class, it can be a game changer for postpartum life and how you feel about yourself, your baby, and your new life together. And I promise you will take away many, many nuggets. Don't wait. Go to this link now or click the link in the video description for more. Thank you.